Hello, welcome to Gilboy's Workshop. In this video, I'm going to show you how to restore an existing finish using three very easy to follow steps. Now, the piece of furniture I'm going to demonstrate this process on is up at my parents' house, which is about half a mile away from here. We're going to go and grab it, steal it away from them, get it in here and do some work on it. our chair. <laughs> I've always wanted to get this chair. Oh. Look at this. It's in a bit of a state, but I think that should restore brilliantly. Oh. <laughs> it's typical. Typical dad shit. Watch yourself there again. <laughs> Look at that. That. Let's get out in the sun. You can really see it. So here it is in the workshop. Now, before I start work on this chair of cleaning it uh, and restoring the finish, I thought I'd just give you a little bit of history about chairs like this um, and, and where it sort of originates from date-wise. So this, I would have said, was the latter half of the 19th century. This is late Victorian, smoker's bow chair or farmhouse kitchen chair. Now it's had a bit of life 
as you can see, apart from being at my parents' house in their shed and being used as a garden chair, of recent times there is soil on it. That's good old Devon soil, red mud that's on here. But beyond that is this black, dark finish you can see that runs around the chair. And in areas it's more obvious where it's been rubbed away, you can see it. Now this is a shellac coating that the Victorians used to use. Um, maybe the Edwardians as well, I don't know. Um, and they would apply, it was, so it's shellac it's dissolved, so it was a liquid shellac. And then in that shellac, they would have a color, a stain, a dye. And rather than just wax polishing something to revive something, it would give a coat of this shellac. And it was just brushed on quickly. And it revives the finish really nicely, very fast, um, but it also darkens it down. And repeated applications obviously ends up almost looking like ebony, sort of really sort of darkened it down. But over time, obviously the chair's been used and it's been worn. And you can see quite clearly where the polish has been worn away, and especially on this front, these two lead spindles here at the front of the chair, you can see the hardwood underneath. Now, normally this is beech. I don't think this is beech on here. It might be a different fruit wood. It doesn't look beech-like, but we'll see maybe later on. But you can see the beech coming through, and then you can see another colour which is a colour that was probably applied after the chair was made. I doubt they would have stained it because there's no need to because it just looks lovely, but they might have, they might have stained it. And then on top of that, then there's another colour, which is this shellac. So you've got three colours. You've got the original wood, then you've got the stained colour, uh, a sort of an orangey sort of mahogany look to it, a warm colour, and then you've got the shellac overcoating. So it's given this contrast between the, the wood um, and the, almost, well, it's painted painted finish. So as we go to clean this chair, you'll, that will become more emphasised and also adds to that lovely thing, that important patina and patination, which we all love. You might hear about it being talked about quite a lot, you know, the pattern, preserving the patination. Well, that's what we're going to try and do on this chair. I'm not going to strip it. If I was to strip this uh, right back using strippers and sand it, all of that character would have gone of the year. So I'm not going to do that. We're going to clean and refinish it. And just to show you um, what one a chair looks like that's just been wax polished. I've got one here. Let me show you this one. Right. So here you have two smokers bows. But one is from an earlier date and it's this one. This one here is much earlier. This is the start of the Victorian era, if not maybe a little bit earlier. Um, I think this is an Irish one, an Irish smoker's bow. It's got two cross stretches here and it's slightly shallower in the seat. There's more emphasis for the carved seat area. The spindles are a little bit higher. It just looks a little bit more elegant. It's got a lovely look to this. I mean, it's got quite a shine on this because I've waxed this previously uh, with our antique gold to make it look like this. It's sort of, but it's all its natural colors. But this one, much later, this is sturdier. This is much stronger than this one. This one creaks a lot when you, you sit in it. It's got more movement, but it's, it's definitely prettier, in my opinion. Uh, I like this one more. It's just got a better balance to it than this, but still, nonetheless, We'll crack on with this late Victorian, early Victorian, the same words, elm, elm. This is definitely beech, but I'm thinking this might be a fruit wood on the spindles and on the arms here, and possibly these stretches. Right, let's crack on. Right, let's get on with the cleaning. Now for this, I'm just going to use, these are towels, just terry toweling. I've got one for applying, one for drying, bowl, washing up liquid, and a kettle of not boiling water, just hot water. So that's that's been off the boil for a little while now. I feel like I'm in Blue Peter doing this. Right, okay, so a square, ordinary washing up liquid. Let's get that in there.
Get some warm water. Right, and off we go. I'm not going to be too fussy about doing this. I just want to get rid of all the surplus dirt and soil. It's not often, I must say, it's not often that we have to clean the chair before waxing. It's something I don't often recommend doing. I just say, just go straight in and wax polish a chair. But for this, because it's so dirty and we're also the second stage, I think we'll get rid of all the dirt. Uh, but you don't necessarily have to do this every time. So this center stretcher here has got a real texture to it. So whoever's been sitting in this chair has been putting their heels on the back and rubbing this, this cross stretcher here. Don't often see that. So whoever had it obviously had a tendency to, maybe got short legs or something, I don't know. But that is really, really worn. I'm just washing this, I can see this, it looks like teeth marks in the in the in this stretcher really here but um just make me laugh the amount of times we've had furniture in this workshop and we've had to restore furniture that's been chewed by dogs and puppies it's incredible most of the time you have to replace the spindle but this chair it really is quite solid it's, there's no loose joints in it whatsoever Okay, I think, I think we're good to go now. I think all the dirt is off. There's quite a lot of dirt on there. Successful mission there, just needs to dry. So today is a really sunny day. I'm gonna put it outside just to let it dry for about an hour or so uh, before we go on to the next stage, stage two. So that's the first stage, stage two in a minute. Um, and for that, I'm going to use some naphtha, oil stain, some soft wire wool and a cloth. But let's put it outside and let it dry off for a minute. Okay, so we've had a, a nice long lunch break in yeah, the sun, spring sunshine here today, unusual. Um, Right, now oil stain, so stage two, oil stain, let's explain that one. This, again in true Blue Peter fashion, is an oil stain. This is a naphtha oil stain, this is traditional oil stain. I'm gonna use this to revive the color in a way. So these lighter areas that are on the chair, the oil stain will go penetrating. It will also clean, help clean these areas where there is the old shellac uh, and just refresh the original color, really. So in areas where there are light scratches, this oil stain will penetrate and where it's not, it will just clean and also maybe slightly tint 
uh, the finish that's there. Uh, it's a trick that we discovered or, or developed here in the workshop many, many years ago, and we think it works quite nicely. Uh, so what I'm gonna use is some gloves, some of our pure cotton cloth. Now I don't need all of this. This is just to wipe it off. So I'm gonna cut it near enough and a half. You can get this buffing cloth, this cotton stock in it, if you like, from our website, 100% pure cotton. Again, it's not limp free, a little snow cloud there, but what it works so well. Uh, as a buffing cloth and also now as actually is a wiper for the oil stain. Plastic close fitting gloves, what else am I looking for? That's it, oh, the wire wall, that's it there. Again, available from our website, this is oil free wire wall, not that it makes much difference to this purpose here. Uh, this four zero wire wool, really fine, soft, great for applying this oil stain. Um, as you can see also, I've just covered the bench here because I don't really want to stain the workbench with our oil stain. So I've just found some cardboard from our jars placed on the surface. This I can tear, the wire wall, so I'm going to tear. What's that, 30 centimetres just over. Tease it open to make a pad. Let's get the gloves on. I didn't say what was in the oil stain, did I? So this is a sort of dark oak oil stain with a bit of brown mahogany in there, actually, oil stain, it's a mixture. It's not really important, the wood species colour or the, uh, of the oil stain, it doesn't have to be. It's just a, a darky coloured oil stain, so don't be too worried about getting the right oil stain. As long as it's a dark oil stain, it will work well. Right, let's get going. So I'm just going to charge the soft wire wool with some oil stain. It's going to drip out because otherwise it's going to go everywhere. I'm going to start from the bottom, work my way up this first leg, and just work my way around the chair from the bottom up, wiping as I go. Oil stain is the best for doing this. You don't want to use any other like spirit stains or cellulose spirit based stains that are fast evaporating. You want something that's slow evaporating, hence why we're using the oil stain. Also, unlikely that your oil stain will interfere with any other finish that's underneath it. If you use a methylated spirits based one or a cellulose based stain, you risk the danger of disrupting and burning into the finish underneath. Very unlikely that an oil stain will ever do that. I've never had that happen yet in 30 odd years. So make sure you've got an oil stain. It's quite obvious you've got one because it smells of oil. Now, obviously, the other thing, if you're not in a well ventilated area, doing this outside is best wear a mask. I'm not going to wear a mask for this purpose um, in a big workshop here. And if I wear a mask, you wouldn't really be able to hear me very well. No. 
Don't worry if you miss an area, just go back over with the oil stain. It's not a big deal. You're not trying to stain the surface, really. It's, it's working as a reviver. See how I applied that oil stain to that seat. So I was very casual about doing it, like the whole process, because oil stain really does take a long time for it to flash off to sort of start sort of drying on the surface. And as long as I wipe off the excess, you can see what it does. It already is starting to just add a little bit of colour to the original finish. On here you can see these two marks there's two marks in the seat of the chair I have no idea what they're from um, apart they look like the same shellac based um, over polish that was done by the Victorians or the Edwardians or something like that it looks like an over polish mark that's just spilled there that's not going to come out if it was a light mark then this oil stain revive would work toning it down but as they are dark marks already very unlikely much would happen with them okay I think I think we're there I'm just gonna take this outside actually normally now you would leave this overnight to dry but it is really is quite warm outside uh, for the end of, of March and I put it outside in the sun and just let this dry off for maybe if just a few hours actually a good few hours let the oil stain uh, dry on the surface what remains and then we'll come back in we'll do stage three right okay so we've been cooking the, ch the chair outside in the sun uh, it's nicely dried off like I say if you're doing this in a cooler climate uh, not so warm then just leave the chair overnight just let it dry or the, not necessarily a chair you can do this to other pieces of furniture you don't have to do it to a chair um, but it's nice and dry now so stage three let's wax it So I'm going to use our antique gold polish on this because I think it will add to the overall finish, the overall look of the chair. Uh, our antique gold has, has a colour in it, but it's not heavily coloured. So when it's applied, it just helps to, to again, enrich and emphasize the natural patina that we've got there. Uh, I'm gonna be applying this wax quite heavily. Um, it's not something I often say, but in this circumstance, I want, I want to really get a good coat of our wax on there. I will leave it to dry for about half an hour, then we'll get buffing and hopefully we'll have a nice sort of glowing chair. You can see how the oil stain has, uh, has darkened areas made it a bit, little bit more uniform but also here on these spindles it's just enriched it so uh i think this should be quite successful right right back to same wire wall let's just tear off another length throw that one away oh just one other thing now for those people who are watching, who are watching that um, have used French polish before, I'll just let that van finish reversing. Okay. Uh, for those people who are used to using shellac or French polish, you could, if you wanted to, just put a fad of French polish over the surface of this, just a thin coat of shellac, very thin, just over it, 
let that dry and then wax it if you wanted to. I don't think you need to do it in this circumstance. I think the wax will do it. But if you wanted to, to bring a bit more life into it, to really refresh it, um, you could use a, a shellac fad of French polish over it. Anyway, let's carry on with the waxing. I'm gonna charge the wire wall. And again, I'm just gonna start at the bottom, work my way around the chair, applying the wax. could break this up into sections if you wanted to just wax the ba base and then buff the base and then do the top actually to save trying to hit it all in one go you could use other waxes you don't have to use our wax um, I'm here to sort of help people really with the furniture restoration and tips and tricks um, other waxes aren't going to have the build of this though, um, so that's why obviously I love using it. It's got a lot higher wax content than the other waxes that are available on the market. So therefore the overall effect once I've, we've let this dry and we buff it should be that much better. You could use a cloth if you wanted to to apply the wax. It doesn't do it uh, as good a job as the wire wall. The soft wire wall transfers the wax really nicely to the surface and at the same time um, helps clean the surface. Remember to apply wax polish when you can with the grain. Uh, don't dab it on, apply it straight with the grain. A nice even application. Okay, there's just one other thing that uh, might help when it comes to applying wax polishes. Um, certainly in carved relief or hard to reach areas, you can use a little trimmed paintbrush. This is a, a one inch uh, paintbrush, really cheap. All I've done is trimmed off, just trimmed off the ends. Uh, so trimmed it into a sort of stump, I suppose that's what, no more than about an inch there itself really, that's left. And it's great for charging with wax and getting in these really hard to reach sort of areas, sometimes uncarved work. So if you've got a carved oak coffer or something like that, you could use a trimmed paintbrush to get into the carved areas. I think, I think we're there. I'm gonna leave that now for about 20 minutes, half an hour, and then we're gonna go on a, on a buffing mission and hopefully you'll see it sort of lift and that lovely sort of richness will come to the chair. So let's go make a cup of tea, I think. Time for a cup of tea. Okay, so we've waited 20 minutes, half an hour. Our dull chair is ready to be buffed. Just gonna pick off some of our pure cotton buffing cloth. Um, the reason I like using this pure cotton buffing cloth is because it's got a really nice open weave to it. Uh, this prevents the surface or helps prevent the surface from getting too hot and remelting the wax and getting smears. Um, so what we're doing here is we're buffing the wax to a shine. We're not buffing the wax off, although I do expect there to be some residue on the cloth, but I think the majority of it should stay on the chair and you should see a lovely soft glow appearing. <laughs> the train's outside. Right, okay. It's 
it's not lint free, <laughs> as you can see. Wow. And then, sorry, the noise is the train going by. <laughs> Our workshop is right beside a heritage railway line. Um, well, maybe get some shots of the train going by. Yeah, that's worked. <laughs> I quite like that. <laughs> Look at that. As soon as I touch it, really. really is quite rewarding after not too much effort really to restore a chair like this or a piece of furniture and enhance it the way that we've done here. Whilst I am buffing the back of this chair, I just thought there is another way of buffing the carved areas as I just demonstrated using the little trimmed paintbrush to apply. You can use a shoe brush, you know, the shoe buffing brushes, the stiff brush, to buff those hard to reach areas and get into the carved areas. But on this chair, you don't really need it. Maybe on something like the carved coffer or something like that. Okay, so I think after that quite intense bit of buffing, we're there. And well, look at that. Um, I really wasn't quite exactly sure how it would turn out, what it would look like, but as soon as I put the buffing cloth to the first spindle here, you can see it just come to life. And now it's got this lovely richness, a natural richness to it that emphasises what was there before 
has now just been lifted and it's got a glow about it and you can see. So it's a really nice way of restoring or preserving what you had originally there as a finish by using this three stages, that cleaning stage, if it's particularly dirty, using the oil stain to revive the old finish a bit and colour out marks and scratches and light areas and sort of tone them in a little bit and then the wax polish to really lift it all and give it a shine. And there you have a lovely chair that can be used for years and years. You don't need to wax that again. Well, it depends how much the chair gets used, to be honest. If it gets used a lot, then you could wax it maybe in sort of six months time, just on the areas where it sort of gets a lot of wear on the back, the arms and the seat, maybe the spindles. But if it doesn't get used a huge amount, it can be used uh, left like this for years before you have to buff, buff it again or wax it again, sorry. Uh, maintenance, talking about buffing it, if you want to maintain it, it literally is just a buff. You're just going to revive the, that, that wax that's there. Now, also saying about waxing again, if you have done this process and you haven't quite got the lift you wanted, it might have been that the chair or the piece of furniture was particularly dry, you can always re-wax it, reapply. Now, you don't necessarily have to go over the, with the coloured wax. You could use maybe a clear wax. Um, pure gold. Our pure gold is a clear colourless polish. You could go over the top of this with a clear wax but leave it for three or four days. Don't do it immediately. Give this time, this wax time to dry and everything to dry hard before doing it again and that will help you get this lovely sort of soft glow, this natural glow to the furniture with using natural waxes. So I hope this helps. Um, if you want any more information please visit our website. There are lots of uh, hints and tips on there. Uh, there will be a help and advice section on our website where you can look at all the different things I've written about, talked about in the, uh, videos and about furniture restoration. Um, please subscribe to our video channel. Hit the subscribe button, which is down to your bottom right. And then once you've subscribed, hit the bell icon and that will notify you every time that we upload a new video. I think that, I think that looks fantastic.